Stand by my side, offer your hand as I am offering you. To have and to hold, together we'll grow in two. The image of the Father, reflecting love in one another. For on this day, and for all time, I choose you. With faith as our guide and hope in our eyes, we share these words today. The promises made will strengthen us on our way. The journey that's beginning is built on a love that has no end. With God in our lives and you standing by my side. The journey that's beginning is built on love that has no end. With God in our lives and you standing by my side.
Please join in singing the God of all grace found in your worship guide. Welcome everyone to St. Edward Parish. This is the day we have been waiting for, praise God. It's a big day for Eric and Kayla. So we join in their joy and their happiness today as we unite them, as they unite themselves in the sacrament of matrimony. So thank you for being present with them. My name is Deacon Tom Lang. I'm one of the deacons here at St. Edward Parish. and very happy to be with you this afternoon to witness this this marriage. They're going to marry each other. I'm not going to marry them. They're going to marry each other. I'm just going to be the official witness of the church. So let us begin this celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and with your spirit. And let us pray. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration, dear brothers and sisters. And now we stand with Eric and Kayla on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father through Christ our Lord, for this couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. So now let us be seated and listen to God's word for us. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suited for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground all wild animals and all the birds in the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each living creature was its name. The man gave names to all the tame animals, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals but none proved to be a helper suited to the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. 
The Lord God then built the rib that he had taken from the man into a woman. He, when he brought her to the man, the man said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one has been taken. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, the, and the two of them become one body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Read, excuse me, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all face so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I am nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. 
It does not seek its own interests, and it is not quick-tempered. It is it does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they no, are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <coughs> Kayla and Eric, I wish that I could tell you some of the words from the homily given at my own wedding 50 years ago, uh, but I cannot. I cannot remember even a word of it. And chances are you won't remember this homily either. There's something that happens on your wedding day. Your shoes are usually too tight and it cuts off the circulation to your brain. Amnesia sets in. You get up in the morning, put on your shoes, and the next thing you remember, you have icing on your chin and someone is videotaping you doing the bunny hop. But let me share a few thoughts with you anyway. This is a moment of great beauty, and great meaning. It goes beyond the flowers, the music, and the beautiful dress. You may find this hard to believe, but the most precious part of this day is even bigger and more elaborate than the party that will come later. So let me tell you why this day matters so much. It is because this celebration embraces two sentiments that are central to our humanity, central to our faith love and hope. Human beings are the only creatures on earth who feel these things. We are the only ones who have the capacity to truly love one another, to cherish one another, and to hope with one another. And because of that, those two feelings carry a spark of the divine. It is God leaving his signature within us. He is giving us the ability to love, and the capacity to hope. It is one reason among many why what we celebrate today is a sacred moment, a sign of God's grace. 
It begins with our first reading from the book of Genesis, the story of creation. This reading begins with God saying, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So Adam, so for Adam, God created Eve. I love Adam's response when he first saw her. Wow, well, I added that part. <laughs> but he must have said it. Wow, this is the one, this one is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. So with this image in mind, I wish I could have been present when Eric first met Kayla. I'm sure it went something like this. Eric saw Kayla for the first time and said, wow, this one. This one at last is the one I want to spend the rest of my life with. And at the same time, Kayla looked at Eric and said, wow, this one, this one is the one, the one man that I want to marry. Now, it may not have been exactly that way, but I'm sure it was close. At any rate, the reading ends with God saying, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one. This is why this means so much. By marrying one another, you are saying more than just I do. You are saying I do love and I do hope. In reality, you are affirming the mystery of that and saying that you care for one another and will care for one another, no matter what. You are saying that you believe that your future together will be brighter because the person next to you is part of it. You are saying we are part of a chain, a story stretching back to the beginnings of time, and we want to continue the story. You are saying that you will continue that story by becoming a family to one another, and welcoming children, and letting God continue his creative work in the world. In the second reading, St. Paul reminds us of the virtue of love. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. At the same time, love is sometimes tested. Perhaps it is like that first date you had together. Here is how I understand it. On the evening of that first date, Eric was going to take Kayla out to eat. So he graciously picked up Kayla and politely asked her where she wanted to eat. Kayla, perhaps not aware of Eric's eating habits, suggested they go to the local Mexican restaurant. Not being fond of exotic food, Eric had never been to a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Love is patient. Love is kind. Eric drove to the restaurant for a quiet time together, and the two of them were seated. First date. So far, so good. Eric opened the menu and looked down the selections and discovered that he didn't recognize anything he was familiar with. Not aware of Eric's predicament, Kayla was enjoying the moment and found herself overwhelmed with the selections. Trying to do the best he could, Eric decided to order the steak fajita. Anything with steak in the name should be good, right? And Kayla also ordered. Well, when the waitress carried the food out, Eric was somewhat embarrassed to discover his food was making noise and smoking noticeably. Yes, the steak fajita was sizzling, steaming, and carrying on and everyone was looking at them. While Kayla was having fun with the moment, Eric was not. 
But somehow, somehow, Eric managed to end the time in the restaurant without eating his steak fajita. But not to worry, here we are today. You know, this is good, here we are at their wedding. So love is not jealous, it's not pompous, it's not inflated, it is not rude. So here is the rest of the story. After returning Kayla to her home, the resourceful yet hungry Eric went to a place where he recognized the items on the menu. He went to McDonald's. <laughs> St. Paul ends his reading with, love never fails. If that is not love and if that is not hope, I don't know what is. Eric and Kayla, you are expressing with your presence here today something that poets have been trying to put into words for centuries. It is a small spark, that spark of the divine that I mentioned, a light that you today promise to nurture, a light that you will protect from the wind and the rain and the cold. This light is the presence of Jesus in your married life. In the gospel reading that Eric and Kayla have chosen for their wedding, Jesus responds to a very serious question. And Jesus says, have you not read that from the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two of them shall become one flesh. The two become one flesh. How can two become one? In our Christian faith traditions, we often use symbols to help us understand the mysteries of God. Something from our everyday life that we can see and touch that brings us to a deeper mystical level like water, for example. Water is a simple part of our everyday life. We drink it, we wash with it, it sustains our life. But when water is brought to baptism, it washes us from sin and gives us new life in God's presence. So the two become one. What image could we use for this? I believe a great symbol for the marriage bond is a hinge. How did that get there? A hinge, a simple hinge. We all know what a hinge is. We see them, they're around us every day. They are just a simple little mechanism that becomes very important in our life. It's a symbol of the unity of a man and a wife coming together um, and because these are two really separate individual pieces, one representing Eric, one representing Kayla. And when they come together today in this church before God and all of you, they invite God into their marriage. And God becomes this pin in the center that holds everything here together. And so God, present in their married life now, becomes very movable and flexible and gives them all the freedom that they desire in their life. It gives them the freedom to come together in total intimacy so they can love one another completely. It is also designed in such a way that they cannot turn their back on each other. And yet this hinge, the symbol of married life, is there as long as that pin remains in place. As long as they continue to welcome God in their lives, this hinge will go on for the rest of their lives. If for any reason this hinge, if God is removed, you can see what will happen. The two pieces will fall apart and their lives will not be the same. And so for all of us, and for Eric and, and Kayla, for all of us that are married, how important it is to keep God in our married life.
Most of us are familiar with the beautiful words of St. Paul we heard a moment ago in our second reading. It is a clear and eloquent letter about love. We hear this reading often at weddings, but St. Paul was not talking about marriage. He was writing to the Corinthians about how to live together as community. And so I would ask of this community to take these words to heart, to make of them a prayer, and then give them back as a kind of gift to this couple. I would ask all of us to strive very simply to be the very definition of love for this couple, to be patient with them, to be kind to them, rejoice with them, believe with them, hope with them, them, be a model to them so they in turn will be these things to one another and to others in their lives. This is what St. Paul asked for the Corinthians, and really it is what Jesus asks of us. If we truly live this way with this couple and with one another, we will give Eric and Kayla gifts more valuable than anything on the registry. They are gifts that won't tarnish and won't wear out, they are gifts that you can never have too much of. I am speaking, of course, of love and hope. It is my prayer that you, Eric and Kayla, will keep God in your marriage, and that you will always give these gifts of love and hope the first place in your home. And it is also my prayer that these gifts will be returned again and again. And if you do that, the spark already present will spread, the light of love and hope will grow, and the story, your story, will go on for the rest of your lives. Now invite Eric and Kayla to come forward. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and this community, your intentions to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Eric and Kayla, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, I invite you to turn to each other, to join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Eric. I, Eric. Kayla? Thank you, Kayla. Be my wife. Be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. 
of you. To love you and to honor you all the days of my life. I, Kayla, take you, Eric, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you, to honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing with you. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Amen. Okay. Receive this ring. Receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Eric, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. See of the Lord and look for him. He will bring you his light and his peace. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you Love. I have called you and you are mine. Seek the face of the Lord and look for him. He will bring you his joy and his hope. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you, and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you, and you are mine. Seek the face of the Lord and look for him. He will bring his care and his love. I have loved you with an everlasting love. 
I have called you, and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you, and you are Please stand as we pray for Eric and Kayla and for the needs of their family and the whole world. With confidence and faith, we now ask God to listen to our prayers, which we offer for the needs of all the world. For married persons, that they may continue to give, be able to forgive, and find happiness deepen within the passing of each day, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the bishops and clergy everywhere, that they may lead us to a deeper faith in God and a stronger love for others. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For our president and all the leaders of government, that they may be effective in achieving peace and eliminating poverty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Kayla and Eric, who received the sacrament of marriage today, that they may continue to have the support of friends and family and the rich blessing of children, a warm love reaching out to others and good health for many years. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who serve our nation in the armed forces, that they might be protected in their service and return home safely. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and in need of healing, that through the skills of medical personnel, they may be restored to full health, strengthened by God's healing and aided by their friends. Let us pray to the Lord. For the needs of the families and friends of Kayla and Eric, that God will bless and provide for them in all their days. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially the friends and relatives of Kayla and Eric, including Emmett Brannon, grandfather of Kayla, Tom Brannon, uncle of Kayla, and Bob Hendrickson, uncle of Eric, that they may enjoy perfect happiness and total fulfillment in eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayers for this new married couple and for the whole world. Show us your love as you always do, through Christ our Lord. And now together as a community, we pray. So at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Eric and Kayla, please come forward for this special blessing that we call the nuptial blessing. Now let us invoke God's blessing upon this couple and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of matrimony. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning, 
is endowed with the one blessing, not forwarded, forfeited by original sin or washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Kayla, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband, Eric, entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments, made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children and grant that reaching out at last together the fullness of years for which they hope. May they come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. My brothers and sisters, it is my pleasure and my joy to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Eric Miller. Congratulations. Wow. Congratulations, Eric. Oh, that was great. Congratulations.